Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So, remember when I left you on a, a small trivia, right? So I was telling you how are we supposed to coordinate these pieces in a better position so that they can develop. So I purposely left this pawn here. Um, this pawn was meant to blockade the bishop and sort of just keep the knight from developing to c6. Now, what is a way in which we can get the bishop out, we can get the knight out somewhere, somewhere, we can get this knight out, get this knight out, get this bishop out, and castle. What is one way to do that? Well, there's there's sort of multiple ways to do it, but here's the move. Knight f5. Now you might be like, well, I thought that was logical. I mean, move it out, get it out. Well, yeah, it's a little bit logical, but also a little bit weird. Because you've already moved the knight from here to here, and now here. Like, why are we moving it so many times? Right, so that's a very strange part of it. So after knight f5, the benefit is that now you get to bring this bishop to c5. And the second benefit is, okay, I get to move the knight to maybe h6. And then you can put your knight on d6 if you want to. So just imagine that for one second. If you can see all those moves in your head, pretend on the board there is a bishop on c5, there is a knight on d6, and there is a knight on h6. So obviously you'll see that, okay, it's much better than putting your pieces on the original squares, right? It gives your king a moment to castle, so there's good things with it. So obviously it's a hard thing to figure out. But in the game, our Aaron played rook c8. And although this threatens the bishop, what's more important in this position is actually the development of these three pieces. So after queen e2, it sort of thinks, okay, there's d6 coming. There's a pin on the knight and the king. What does black do? Queen c7 leads to knight b5. Queen takes c4. Knight d6 check. Look at that. The golden... The golden fork. After king d8, I said, should we take advantage of our fun a little bit more? I said, yeah. Knight takes b7. Because after king c7, queen takes c4. After king e8, knight d6. So I did that. King e8, knight d6. King d8, now I could I could do it more. I could go to f7 and go back. But I decided not to. I just took on c4. Knight takes d5. And after castle kingside, knight takes f4. The bishop came out. And you'll see that, you know, Aaron was trying to develop, but the things just failed because these guys were too strong. The bishop was controlling, it was manipulating Black's defenses, and it really fell apart from here. So, what can we learn from this game? Well, we can learn that at least play d5. Do a little bit of the controlling this center. Sometimes it's it's hard, right? You, you see that mm, all these pawns are coming. So what do I have to do? I have to fight back, right? You can't just sit like a turtle all the time. Although you can in some cases, but in this case, gotta fight. Gotta fight a little bit. But after b6, mm, didn't look great after knight e7 especially these guys, and with a pawn on f6, ooh, didn't like it. c4, c6, knight c3, 
takes, takes, and you'll see that one of the other um, small mistakes was going after the bishop, right? Even though you might think, well, it's, 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 it's easy, it's logical to make threats. Well, yeah, it's, it's logical to bring the rook out and attack the bishop. But, except it's not our first priority. Our first priority is to develop these three guys. Because if you'd never develop these three guys, this guy's never going to have a future. So think about that. And especially after this happened, it was just demolition derby. And... This king just never got anywhere. Mm, really, that's how I want it. So thank you, and I will see you next time.